Uh, before we begin our worship time this morning, uh, we've had a request from someone to begin our service with a bit of a prelude of music. Uh, Jillian would like to play for us, God Rest Ye Merry Gentlemen. And so, of course, like any other person who offers to uh, share something in worship, of course, we were thrilled. Um, and I just want to use this as an opportunity to say, if you are at all interested in, in sharing, uh, be you child, a teenager, young adult, a senior, or anything else, um, we would love to have you. Just let me know, and we'll happily uh, find a spot for you in the worship. So we'll give uh, Jill just a minute to set up here, and we'll begin with God Rest You Merry Gentlemen. <laughs> to sit back as we begin with our acknowledgement of the Indigenous territories. If you're not in the Waterloo region, um, I invite you to consider what territories you might be uh, worshipping with us today. Um, and if you know it, feel free to type in that territory in our chat box. And um, if you don't know it, I would invite you to do a little bit of research. There are a couple of websites um, that are fantastic at helping us learn a lot more about the Indigenous territories on which we live. And um, if anybody has, uh, has that on the top of their head, if they want to put that, those websites in the chat uh, box, that would be great too. Long before those of us who are settlers and those of us who are descendants of settlers came to this land, there were people here. Many nations of people lived and live on the land we call Canada, given responsibility by the creator to be stewards of this land and all that lives on it. We know these people as the First Nations. Today, as we remember what it means to live thankfully, to live in love, peace, and joy, let us give thanks for the First Nations of this land wherever we might be right now. And let us remember that at Westminster, we worship God on the historic and unceded territory of the neutral Anishinaabe and the Haudenosaunee of Six Nations. As Christ's people, let us be people of love, of truth, and of reconciliation. That's great. Um, I want to share a few announcements with you all and offer a welcome to everybody who has joined us here in Zoom and those of you who join us a little later once our uh, worship videos are posted on YouTube. Um, we're so thrilled to have you joining us in this time or in any other time. Uh, one announcement you may have seen in our emailed out announcements is something called the Become a Phone Pal at Westminster. In this time of pandemic and especially as um, Waterloo is in the red zone and the numbers of COVID cases are increasing and people are very rightly so much more concerned about um, going out, we thought um, what a wonderful opportunity to connect people together um, who may not have connected before or who do already. So if you're at all interested in becoming a phone pal um, to talk with um, other people of Westminster, simply as a way of connecting with absolutely no agenda, um, unless you decide on an agenda yourselves, why don't you send a message to Sarah Lynn at the office and let her know, and we would be thrilled to help connect you with somebody else. Um, everyone can benefit from a friendly conversation. Um, I also want to just let folks know, if you haven't noticed already, um, for the last couple of weeks, every Friday when Sarah Lynn sends out our um, reminder about worship and the link, she also includes um, a copy of our bulletin um, so that folks who enjoy having um, a copy of the bulletin or who like to know what's coming up can uh, print that off ahead of time. 
Um, and for those especially who join us on the phone and aren't able to see the video phone or video feed, uh, we thought this might be something really helpful to help you feel a little more connected as you join um, this worship, even though you can't see everything. So I just want to highlight that in case you haven't noticed. That goes out every Friday, usually in the afternoon, and occasionally it comes out on a Saturday, depending on how things have gone that week. <laughs> Um, next Sunday is, I'm very, very excited about next Sunday. It is our White Gift Sunday. Um, so we will be focusing a little bit on Oxford House, our friends in Manitoba of the Cree Nation there. And we'll also be um, spending a little time um, and effort raising some money to send to them. Last year, we raised the most we've ever raised before. We raised $4,000 to send to them, um, which was a huge um, welcomed gift. Um, we'll talk a lot more about them next week, but I just wanted to put that little bug in your, your ear. As this is White Gift Sunday, we try to do something a little more, a little different from how we often do worship. Um, this year, since things are all different, we thought we'd continue that theme and try a Zoom pageant. So we have 50 Teen folks from Westminster who've joined together to put uh, to put a pandemic pageant together. Um, Paul uh, has a slide to give you a quick preview of what you might be seeing. So I didn't let anyone know I was taking this screenshot and obviously forgot I would even be in it, <laughs> as you can tell. But this is just a brief taste of what you will be seeing next week. Um, and we'll also, of course, put that on our YouTube page for those who can't be with us live next week. Um, and while you've got the slides up, Paul, would you go to the next slide? So this is um, an updated poster of our Advent and Christmas services. Today, uh, oh, this, silly me, I used an older updated version. Uh, today is the joy of the shepherds, not the love of the shepherds. Um, next Sunday is our white gift Sunday, <clears throat> white gift uh, worship. Then on Monday, to, Monday, December the 21st, this is the, the shortest day of the year, also known as the longest night of the year. And so this is a great time for <clears throat> a time to gather in worship, remembering that um, Christmas can be a really difficult time for those who have lost loved ones, lost jobs, lost homes, lost situations, relationships. Um, and so this is a particularly uh, different service uh, with the focus of remembering how hard it can be at Christmas when um, you're remembering all of those things. Um, as we all live in a time of pandemic, we have all lost um, a lot in our lives. And so I would invite you to um, consider spending a couple minutes or spending the whole time with that service. Parkminster United is the one hosting this. It will be shown live on their Facebook. Um, <clears throat> they also, they do it on Zoom and it goes directly live on Facebook. Um, if you want the Zoom link, if you already receive our email announcements, it's at the bottom uh, or near the bottom of our email announcements. Um, they've asked us not to put it out uh, directly in the public, uh, the Zoom link, just to avoid any Zoom bombers, um, people who take advantage of, um, of Zoom and are not always the most helpful. Um, so we're not sharing that super publicly, but we think we can trust all of you with the Zoom page to not uh, use it in a <laughs> bad ways. Um, Christmas Eve will continue in a different way. It will be on Zoom. We're calling it Home for the Holy Days instead of the Holidays, and that will take place on Zoom right here at 7 p.m. on Christmas Eve. Christmas Day, because this year is already full of so much um, that is different and hard, uh, we thought we'd take this opportunity, since we're virtual all the time anyway, to have an 11 a.m. relaxed, um, short, serve time of worship on Christmas Day and a time of <clears throat> Zoom conversation after for anybody who would like to stay. Um, so you're very welcome to that. And then on the first Sunday after Christmas, Christmas one, 
at 10.30 a.m. we will be showing the 12 days of Christmas. This is a worship service that the churches of Waterloo, the Waterloo United Churches, we've put together. Uh, we're in the process of recording. Um, and so then we'll be live. Uh, it'll go live at 10.30 uh, for Westminster folks and, and for everybody. Um, this is a service that I created a few years ago and we've sort of updated it and uh, mixed it around a little bit um, for the 12 days of Christmas, something fun and uh, some songs and stories and a little bit about um, some of the symbolism that people uh, think uh, is in, in the 12 days of Christmas. All right. Well, friends, I would invite you wherever you are to mute yourselves and let us join together in our opening hymn from Voices United. We'll sing verses one and two of All Earth is Waiting. we gather today to pray our lost hopes, broken peace, limited joys, and love so hard to find and share in this time of coronavirus. We affirm that our candles mean we claim the power to call the season Advent. When God's light comes into the world and nothing can overcome it, we light the candles of hope and peace. We now light the candle of joy in spite of missing so many things we thought were essential to a Merry Christmas. Things like shopping trips, parties, concerts, photos with Santa, Christmas visits, school sports, chances to hug, worshiping in a church building. God's joy ignites embers under loss and sorrow and brightens the path to love. Emmanuel, God be with us in the week to come, lighting hope, peace, and joy on the wick of our lives so that we may shine it on our world with a simple smile and unexpected laughter. Amen. Jesus came bringing us hope. Jesus came bringing us hope. Jesus came bringing us
with joy in our hearts at seeing some of the folks here at, at Westminster um, and with the joy on our hearts, uh, remembering all of the gifts that we've been given this day, let us join together in our opening prayer. O holy God of exuberance and of joy, we rejoice this morning in the reality of who you are. We live within the joy of your love for each and every one of us. Our contentment comes and goes, our happiness ebbs and flows. Our feelings depend upon our circumstances, our physical health, our brain chemistry, what's going on in our life. But our joy is deeply rooted in our identity as your beloved children. And we give you thanks. Amen. And we join together with the prayer that Jesus shared with us as he showed your mothering love, O oh God. As we say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning is something we probably know quite well, or we think we might know quite well. This is a part of the Christmas story that we read every single year on Christmas Eve. Um, and this Advent 3, we look at it a little bit differently. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the God stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you was born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom God favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this, this thing that has taken place, which God has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. Listen to what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Well, a big thank you to Ashley and Dana and Briella for taking on our Advent wreath this morning. It has been so lovely to see our wreath in various different places uh, every Sunday of Advent. And it's been really fun and interesting to see how each family sets it up. With the whole world feeling upside down during this pandemic, we've had to find new and different ways to do the things that we always took for granted, like Zoom worship for one. Once we realized we couldn't do our Advent wreath in the traditional way we do it, there were a number of different possibilities considered before we landed on a traveling Advent wreath. Churches all around the globe are finding ways to help their congregants continue old traditions in new ways. Uh, Reverend Liz Miller of Edgewood United Church of Christ in East Lansing, Michigan, created this video you're about to see to help her congregation bring the tradition of the Advent wreath into their homes. Well, friends, what a year it's been. We had Easter at home, 
we celebrated Earth Day alone, and now it looks like Advent will be more of the same. Many of us are trying to avoid excessive trips to the store, so the question is, how do we light Advent candles each Sunday if we don't have an Advent wreath at home? COVID crafting to the rescue. Any candle you have at home can be used in your Advent wreath. It doesn't matter if they are different sizes or colors. It doesn't matter if they are electric or old fashioned. It doesn't matter if it smells like beach walk or holiday hearth. If you're in a worshipful mood as you light them each Sunday, they will be just fine. But what if you con Marie'd all your candles last year? You can improvise with objects you have on hand to create a modern advent wreath. This is where your toilet paper hoarding pays off. Empty toilet paper rolls make great fake candles. Then each week you take a post-it note and cut it into the shape of a flame, affixing it to each of the candles. And if you're running low on toilet paper rolls, get out of the bathroom and head to the kitchen to see what can be a stand-in for your advent wreath. 2020 is all about making do with what we've got. So you'll want to look for three items that are identical and one that is slightly different to represent the candle of joy. Onion, onion, joy, onion, spoon, spoon, joy, spoon. Cabernet, Cabernet, Rosé, Merlot. Canned goods are a personal DIY candle favorite. A can of cranberry sauce completes this gorgeous garbanzo bean advent wreath. Top them off with carrot sticks for realistic looking flames. Whatever wreath you assemble, place it on a nearby table as you tune into worship each Sunday in Advent, knowing that just as God was with Mary and Joseph and the shepherds on their lonely and brave journeys, God is with you too. So for us, we have Yoda Santa, Yoda Santa, Gnome, Yoda Santa. What do you have? <laughs> it's not too late this year to have your own Advent wreath. Consider what you've got in your cupboards. This was a fun, uh, lighthearted way to remember that things must be done differently this year, but that doesn't make them any worse, just different. This morning, uh, the Christmas story that we heard is one that we have heard probably our whole lives, right from Sunday school age up until now, today, and we will hear this same one in just, um, just over a week and a half. And today we look at this Christmas story from a different perspective, from the perspective of the shepherds. When we who live in the 21st century think about the shepherds, we often picture these fun loving guys and perhaps even women hanging out on a hilltop wearing lovely white robes and surrounded by friendly fluffy sheep. And like many of our impressions of life in Asia Minor 2000 years ago, this isn't quite accurate. Throughout the history of Israel, shepherding was known as a very noble profession. Abel was the first to have this job, followed by Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, and of course, David, before he became king. However, by the time we come to the first century, when Jesus was born, shepherding had lost its luster. Shepherds spent nearly all of their time in a far away field with their sheep, and it was a life of isolation. Their flocks needed to move around to find new fresh grass and fresh water, and so they never stayed in one place for very long. In a social system that relied very heavily on the caste system, shepherds were near the very bottom. Slaves and leopards were probably the only ones who were beneath them. 
Shepherds were looked down upon because of the dirty work that they did. Living in fields meant that they were literally dirty, but according to kosher laws, they were also ceremonial unclean because of the nature of their work and how closely they worked with livestock. And so they were not allowed in the temple. They were not allowed to attend any religious service. Likely because of this isolation thrust upon them, knowing that they were outcasts, they began to become a bit uncivilized. They were known to be very brash and bold men. Most of them had foul mouths and were ready to fight at the drop of a hat. Something that saved their sheep whenever a wolf would come by, but was not welcomed in towns. They were crude, smelly, and uneducated. And so they were treated with contempt and mistrust because nobody really knew anything about them. They were suspected of stealing from others and their testimony was never allowed in court because they were said to be unreliable. The sheep that they looked after weren't even their own property. They were paid, although not very well, to care for the sheep owned by others who didn't want to get dirty. The sheep the shepherds tended to were the ones that were taken to temple to be the sacrifices to God, and yet they could never enter the temple themselves. So when these are the men, oh sorry, so these are the men who weren't even allowed to worship in temple, who no one wanted anything to do with, these are the ones are the first people God went to, to share the good news of Jesus in the world with first. These are the men who are the first people to meet Jesus outside of his family. These are the men who God has shared the good news of Jesus' birth. These are the men who God asks to share the good news of Jesus' birth with others. From the edges of society, they were trusted by God to share. Now these men know that they are despised. The only time anyone ever comes near them is because they've done something wrong. But as we read in a flash of light and glory, the angel of God came, and not with bad news, but with good news. As we read from Luke, and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom God favors. Can you imagine the joy it would have been to have been chosen to receive this good news and to be told you are the one whom God favors when clearly the world in no way favors you? Talk about unexpected joy. These shepherds expected to spend this night like any other, but they were told by these angels to change course as the chosen ones, to meet the newborn babe, and to be the ones privileged with sharing this world-altering news with everyone. Our life is nowhere near what we expected. Last Christmas, we expected to be spending this Advent season and Christmas sitting in probably our usual pews, singing most of the songs we sing every year, our absolute favorites, and perhaps a new one thrown in here and there. We expected to be able to greet one another, to hug one another, to share our Christmas baking with one another. I don't know if you follow Paul on Facebook, but he is always posting the baked goods he makes, and it just makes me feel a little bit frustrated because I never get to try them anymore and Phyllis's pies and loaves, and the many treats and goodies you would all bring in. We expected we would have that same joy found in all of those things this year. And yet, we don't have any of that. We cannot hug one another. We cannot sit in our usual pews and trust that somebody else will, the person who always sits there will be sitting there. We can't gather and watch the children in the playground to play with the items, to share their sweet insights, to remind us of the beauty, the joy, the hope, the love, and the peace children bring. We don't have any of that. 
but we do have many unexpected joys, joys that we didn't expect to have. I'm confident last Christmas and Advent, we did not think we would be able to worship together on Zoom. Last Christmas, we didn't imagine having a YouTube channel. Last Christmas, we didn't imagine being able to join together on Christmas Day even. We didn't imagine not having to worry about what the roads look like because we can all be together. We didn't imagine spending money on live streaming equipment that I'm told was set up um, yesterday and hopefully if all went well, our choir is using to live stream from today. We didn't expect any of that. And there have been so many unexpected joys this season. This traveling advent wreath, something we never would have done before because we all travel to the wreath. The wreath doesn't travel to us. And yet because of it, we've been able to see the setups of some people's homes. We've been able to see everyone's individual takes on how to do the advent wreath. Yesterday, we wrapped up and recorded the Zoom pageant and we had 15 participants. And I'm sure Marianne, who directs a play most years, would be flabbergasted to know we had our first rehearsal this past Tuesday, our second rehearsal Thursday night, and we had our dress rehearsal and recorded on Saturday. A pageant in a week, literally. And there will be some mishaps along the way when you watch it next week but it will bring you great joy, I promise you that. It may not be bringing our editor, Dale, great joy right now, as he works with the abundance of footage he has, but um, it is a labor of love by all of us, and I can't wait for it to bring you joy. The unexpected joys we've seen because of these Advent videos we have where we get to see photos of people every week, people sending in different photos. And even though we can't be together, we get to see everyone. And that adventure event where we were literally able to come together for some of us. Things are not the same. They are not anywhere near what we expected. And yet we still have great joy. I bring you back to that video at the start of Reverend Liz showing us a little bit of how to do something we've always done a little bit different. She reminds us that it's not about making our advent wreath perfect. Clearly it's not when you use carrots for flames, but it is about how we approach this meaning of advent, how we approach Christmas, how we approach every day. We have deep griefs. There have been significant losses. We are told that every day in the news and in the media. And yet, like those shepherds who expected everything to be the same, in the newness, in that unexpected night, things not only changed, they changed to make everything better. Better for those shepherds who knew what it meant to be outcasts. Better for Jesus and his family who had these shepherds to share the news, and still over 2,000 years later, better for all of us. In this season of Advent, as we await, we are having to do things differently. And yet, there's one thing that we will never have to do differently, and that is find deep joy in God. This week and this season, may we look for those unexpected joys the ways in which the angels come to us in a shining heavenly light, shouting Gloria upon all of us. Thanks be to God for the unexpected joys in this time together. Amen.
wherever you might be right now, I invite you to settle yourself in your seat, to breathe in deep. As you breathe in, may you breathe in the strength and the spirit of God. May you release as you breathe out all that holds you back from finding hope, peace, and joy in this time. Let us lift up our prayers of thanksgiving and of joy and of care and concern to God. O holy God of joy, we rejoice in the reality of who you are. We live within the joy of your love with us and the knowledge of it, even when we struggle to feel it. Sometimes it sounds naive in a world full of struggle and of grief to choose to live in joy. It may seem a bit foolish in a world where seriousness is power to sing and to dance to a different tune. And it may sound cruel in a world of suffering and of injustice to speak of light and of celebration. But you have come in Jesus made flesh to bring joy into our griefs, to bring light into the shadows, to sing into our mourning. And it is an act of healing and proclamation to believe and to embrace the joy you offer to us all. And for this, we give you thanks. God, as we continue to live in a world that is struggling, we hold in our prayers the many who have lost jobs. We pray for those who have lost relationships. We pray for those who have lost their loved ones. We pray for the many who are isolated every day, either because they're in care homes where they're not allowed to go out, or they live on the outskirts, on the edges of our world where no one wants to go and be. We hold up those who are homeless. We hold up those who are feared because of their mental illness or physical illnesses. We hold up those who are seen as different, but know your joy. And we remember that all of us, all of the others are beloved by you just as they are. In this time of pandemic, God, we continue to pray for those who fight illness, not only COVID, but those who fight all other illnesses and those who fight devastating disease in a place where they can't even have companions on the journey with them because it is unsafe for everyone. We pray for all who strive to bring hope, peace and joy into your world. And in the silence, O oh God, we lift up the prayers we hold deep within our own hearts and souls. God, you who weep with those who weep, we call out on behalf of those who seek your presence. Where there are tears or suffering or illness or grief, may there be songs of joy once again. We lift up these, the prayers of your people with longing and hope, trusting that you will bring forth a harvest of joy. For we pray it in the name of the one whom we await. Amen. Please join with me in our Christmas hymn for today, Voices United 38, verses 1 and 2.
of joy. Let us allow joy to live in our hearts and to share the joy of Christ with all who we meet. Let us share joy by seeing the good in one another. Let us share joy by remembering good times and hoping for good times to come. Let us share joy by finding new ways to be unexpectedly joyful. In this Advent season, we see, feel, and share the joy. As we go out into our world, into the wonders of God's creation, let us share joy, peace, and hope with all who we meet. Thanks be to God. Amen.